Crossroads Media. Now, I just felt I wanted to break this team down yesterday for no other reason than I missed talking ball. And I had zero understanding that Dave would be joining the WIP morning show this morning. When I woke up and saw some quotes, I'm like, fuck yeah, baby. I'm fiending for more. You're telling me I get a little back to back? All right, I'd make a Drake reference, but I don't know if I want to touch that right now. <laughs> <laughs> if you're unaware, don't search Drake on Twitter. Jesus Christ. Don't know how that just happened. But here we go. It is so awesome to hear such a soothing baseball mind in control. It's so obvious why everywhere he goes, there's success. He gets it. He's so smart. He's so intelligent. He knows where to allocate the money. He understands when it's time to take risks. He gets how important it is to bring Nola back. He knows the type of player Yamamoto is and said that you'd be damn surprised if you heard the money we put on the table. But sometimes it just comes down to he wanted to be a Dodger. He grew up an LA fan. That's what it is. And you can't get around that no matter what your selling point is. No matter how electric Citizens Bank Park gets in the month of October, you you can't get that guy off of wanting to be a Dodger. And he was so open and so candid with his answers. Well, why not think about bringing Reese back? Well, we did. We had meetings. We talked about it. But at the end of the day, we feel obligated to look at our defense, even though a lot of guys just want to hear about power and a lot of guys just want to hear about home runs. We need to do some things with this team to sharpen up the defense, and if we can get Kyle Schwarber out of left field, then that is what suits our team best, especially with Bryce now, who we could project as a great defender over at first base, and he's just being honest. It's almost like you're chatting it up with the boys. All right, we have a lot of audio cuts. We're going to let them play, and then we're going to give our opinion on what we heard. So we start off on, hey, Dave, do you believe that it's fair to say it's been quiet, and why was it quiet? Here's Dave Dombrowski. Our first real big goal was to get a starting pitcher with Aaron becoming a free agent. Of course, we were fortunate to re-sign him, which is a big signing for us. That really stabilized our starting rotation. And when you say, well, why? I think there's a combination of factors. One is we have a good club. Um, that's apparent. There's not gaping holes. And we're also in an opportunity where giving opportunity to some of our young players, which people are not usually very open-minded to or understanding. But we think if we're going to be the organization that we would like to be throughout, that we would we want to give young players an opportunity. I love that answer. And here's why. It pretty much describes everything I was saying in our previous pod. This team's good. This team is damn good. And this team can win the World Series as currently constructed. Just because they failed doesn't mean that this team is incapable with all of the talent on the squad to go and do it. They absolutely started to swing in garbage outside of the strike zone. But what happens if they didn't? If they weren't flailing at pitches seven feet off the plate and they started to work great counts and they were able to be that aggressive and that monster and the team that you're afraid to see because anybody in that lineup could take it to fucking Mars. I mean... It just came down to, damn it, I don't know if they were trying to do too much or they put so much pressure on themselves after what happened in Arizona. Even though you had a 3-2 series lead with Aaron Nola and Zach Wheeler on the mound, if they got into their own head and, you know, the fans coming back home, they, they felt obligated to swing out of their shoes. And he even talked about maybe looking at what went wrong and how they can adjust to make sure it doesn't happen again. And we'll 
we'll get to that momentarily. But man, it's like this roster, why was it so quiet? Because we're great. We're great. There's not that many opportunities to filter in this massive piece. We look around the diamond. Bryson Stott, Bryce Harper on that side of the infield. Alec Bohm and Trey Turner on that side of the infield. JT Real Mutos behind the plate. And you got yourself a Kyle Schwarber and Nick Castellanos, right? Brandon Marsh. And yeah, they're high on Rojas. They are high on Rojas. And I don't necessarily love it. Here's what I'm willing to, to give them, though. I'm willing to give them a little bit of time, and here's why. Because they told us that there was once a time when they brought in Brandon Marsh that they saw something in him. And they felt that they had the people in place from a hitting coach perspective that they can change Brandon Marsh. They could get a lot more out of him. And you'd be a fool to think that they didn't. Brandon Marsh is a sensational player in this organization. He's really turned it on. Now, Christian Pache. The Braves' high prospect. Eh, didn't pan out. The Oakland A's, can something happen? Eh, didn't pan out. We see something in him where we feel we could get something out of him. And then there was a time where my man was getting extra base hits, where he was doing way more after looking overmatched. And we screamed, and we were bothered, and we were so disappointed. But then eventually, there was something there. Not not superstar takeover game stuff, but serviceable nine-hole hitter. There's a big difference on what the bar is. There's no such thing as a team that has a nine-hole hitter that's smoking 30 bombs and hitting 290. So if you're asking them to play a role where they are fantastic defensively with just serviceable hitting, and Rojas was not that last season, but I'm giving you examples on when this president of baseball ops stressed to you that we can change it, we can tweak it, we see things that we can work with, give us time, and you will be surprised, and you'll get something that you feel is beneficial to the club. Well, look. Rojas, is he as bad and overmatched as he was in the playoffs? Maybe, maybe, because guess what? When you get to that time of the year, you got to produce. And he's clearly five, six, seven, if not 17 steps behind if we're going to look at last year as what he is now. But they proved that they can get something out of these kids, out of these guys, out of these struggling hitters. Did they learn anything from the loss to Arizona? Here we go. I will give uh, one thing that ended up taking place, and, and we have looked at this over the winter time. is that I give the Diamondbacks credit. Um, they really uh, adjusted, and we chased a lot those last few games, uh, the balls out of the strike zone. And I think that's something that we're susceptible to doing, but it's also things you can work on. And so it's been a focus for us in that regard, even in discussing with our hitters over the winter time. And we've got some different thought process and different drills that we'll focus on when we get to spring training to hopefully help us a little bit in that regard. And a- absolutely. Sorry, Joe DeCammer, who was going for another question. I apologize. But ultimately, yeah, I mean, that's what you have to do, right? This isn't the first time we heard from the top people in this club that they have to go back and study what we can do differently. Whether it's Rob Thompson speaking about the lineup, whether it's Rob Thompson looking at the way that he utilizes his starting pitching slash bullpen, because when he went to Alvarado versus Jordan Alvarez a few seasons back, when they were competing for the World Series... Now, I didn't mind it because I remember earlier in the series, it worked out for you. That was your your leverage spot, your high leverage spot. Go to the guy that really is tremendous, and he was a workhorse for you, and he really had an advantage when it was a lefty-lefty. Jordan Alvarez is just not human. Okay, that guy is so flat-out fucking gross that sometimes you just have to tip your cap. But to Rob Thompson's credit and to Dave Dombrowski's credit, it's nonstop working. 
every time you hear them kind of a, a, a study what happened, we had a bunch of meetings. We talked every day. We were in the rooms. They seem to be going to work nonstop to try and apply the best thing for this organization to finally get that damn trophy. And I love it. I love it. Now, obviously, you want them to be committed and you would expect them to be committed, but I feel they're committed and some. I feel they know how close they are and they know how rare it is to have this type of group. <laughs>